So what are we going to talk about today? First of all, welcome to the session. Welcome to the third session of your training series. So what are we talking today? See, I hope past in past lectures you have already understood the basic concept of databases, why it is very relevant in case of bioinformatics. And when we are talking about the sequence analysis based on bioinformatics, then we talk about two different families. First family is your nucleic acid family. We are not talking about nucleic acid family right now. Please have a very clear thought. We are talking about protein family. What are the web-based databases that are available for your protein uh, identification or I'd call it as protein information resources that are present on the web portal. See why we, are, why we have started this particular initiative is simply because before going to advanced part of bioinformatics, you should have a very clear cut understanding that what are the available databases. Simply like if you are going to a library, let's talk about Nalanda library. It's a very big library. First of all, if you want to pick up a book of bioinformatics, you should be aware that in Nalanda library, what are the sections that are there in biological sciences? And among those biological sciences, where is the rack which is having the complete collection of bioinformatics? Similar cases here also. So you what presently, you are understanding the very basics of bioinformatics in terms of databases, how to use that databases, how to operate those databases. And then next phase, they'll be using these databases to take the information and put it in different, different softwares. So that is why your basic understanding of databases is of utmost important. And today's session will be based on simple objectives you should be able to understand what are different types of protein databases what are their categories what are the nomenclatures that we are giving them and how based on different different protein characters they have clubbed it to give rise to different different databases by the end you should be able to know clearly by the end you should be able to know clearly what are the databases and how to use them that is the most important point then let us begin let us begin by not wasting much of the time when I'm talking, when I am talking about a protein database, when I'm talking about a protein database here, protein database. So see, there are, in, when you, when you have read nucleotide databases, you only saw primary nucleotide databases, right? Like DDBJ, EMBL, and GenPack. Here, there are variety of databases that will be seen. Why? Simply because protein is existing in primary structure, in, in secondary structure, in tertiary structure, and then to quaternary structure because there is a difference in the structural conformations there are different different databases which are pointing out or which are taking different different characteristics from these particular structures like if you are talking about a database which is completely uh, taking information of secondary structures that is called a secondary database primary database will be having complete information regarding the amino acid sequence the tertiary databases, there are no tertiary databases. There are structural databases. The structural databases will be taking information of a completely three-dimensional protein, whether it's tertiary or quaternary. You will be getting a complete conformational understanding. Then we have certain databases which are clubbing the information. Suppose there is a database X, which has clubbed the information of all these three. Then this is called as composite database. So what we are talking right now in terms of database classification, it's very simple. When we're talking about protein databases, we are talking about a flow chart that is very common. I hope you all remember this flow chart. When we are talking about this is primary database. I am writing in short form, but you should understand it. Primary database, then we have secondary database, then we have composite database, composite database. And then, of course, we have our structural databases that we regularly use in, in multiple case scenarios, whether we are going for docking, whether we are going for drug development or anything. So, yeah, these are the four broad categories that we are talking about. Among primary, it is focusing on amino acid. See, there is an amino acid chain. You should be able to understand how things are happening. After translation, an amino acid chain is formed. Uh, always remember, it is formed from N to C terminal. Then next is what? Next will be formation of disulfide bonds, formation of hydrogen bonds, which will give rise to this kind of structure. A helix is formed, a loop is formed, a beta sheet is formed, and then again a helix is formed. 
what is this these are secondary structures that are formed from the primary structure so what has happened here a simple amino acid sequence has folded and these domains that is responsible for forming these specified structures these when we are talking about characterizing proteins clubbing proteins based on these domains and these motifs then we are talking about the secondary database so what did they talk about they talk about the domains domains and motifs or motifs of the amino acid that is present in the primary structure so if we are talking about clubbing based on this then we are talking about secondary structure then composite composite contains the collection of information from multiple databases it will be having information from primary also it will be having information from secondary also right so like uh, there are certain databases which contain uh, nucleotide uh, databases also for the information so they can have the nucleotide databases club in a single quote scenario also and when we are talking about structural part we are specifically talking about three dimensionally folded protein information so what are the things that we are talking about in this flow chart i hope in the introduction part you were aware of it so we are will be talking about the primary source we are not going in detail of each and every source we will be focusing on the source that you will be using throughout the training that is called as swiss prot or these days it's uniprot in the form of composite database then we have tremble and both these swiss prot and tremble combined to form a uniprot that will be looking in just few minutes and performing our hands on exercise then apart from this we have pir protein information resource we have protein pdb protein data bank this is also a primary source of information we have mips mips is also there and there are many more to just to summarize we have these two and among there these two are most important databases that we will be talking about then in secondary database we have prints we have prints profile pfam we have pfam we have blocks we have identity so these five or six databases are combining to form your secondary structure composite we have plentiful like owl is there uniprot is there genpept is there so you will be getting enough information from these databases because what they are doing say so uniprot uniprot is a composite of swissprot plus tremble so it is containing both the information that are present in swissprot and tremble so it's one of the vastly used databases that we are using uniprot and then structural we are having two major sources like cath we will be talking about cath and we will be talking about score so that is the part that is in turn the complete understanding or complete bifurcation in a very brief manner of the relevant databases that you should be able to grasp it then you should be able to grasp it then let's go ahead we have different different databases it's not that what i have related to you there as a limited option among the primary also excel we have more than 10 different databases so which one is most relevant the most relevant is swiss prot and trend why because swiss prot is completely annotated and non redundant database fine now we will be talking about that in detail then we have tremble translated embl now embl is a nucleotide sequence database all the sequences that are present in embl that are translated to form a translated embl. embl then we have integrated resource of protein families interprio which contains the domains information and suppose you have three enzymes i have given you three different enzymes i have asked you whether these enzymes belong to same family or different family how will you decipher you will take out the sequence complete sequence you will match the sequence if the similarity is there you will say yes they belong to the same family like if i gave you three child the three child i am asking you whether they belong to the same family what you do you you identify their phenotypic carrier the character if the phenotypic character is somewhat resembles you may say that yes they might be of same family then you take out the dna and match if the dna is matching then you say yes they are from the same family likewise if 
you want to categorize the enzymes or the proteins then rather than going for the complete sequence you can also see the catalytic site where the substrate will be binding if all these enzymes are having same catalytic site you can still keep them in a single protein family and that is how the immunoglobulin superfamily and every other family is formed and that information is taken from domain or function sites then we have cluster plus uh, plus tr that we say it can it is again a composite database of swiss protein trimer we have coa coa is nothing but gene ontology where you understand the where the gene is present how that gene is giving the expression of protein database so whenever you want to study the product of any gene and you want to correlate the pro protein with the gene that is one of the finest databases that you should be talking about the coa gene ontology uh, resource then there are multiple other thing when you are going for proteomic profile it's very good to go for swiss prot and tremble or for protein analysis you can choose any of these databases also so let's talk about swiss prot it's very common you must be familiar with it that initially it was established in 1986 why because the sequences were increasing and then after 1887 after 1987 it was given to ebi and then later on it was switched to uh, swiss institute of bioinformatics that is sib and currently till date it is present in switzerland that's why the name came as swiss prot for protein fine next that's a historical scenario but for us what is most important for us the most important part is this thing this thing which i have circled it's a curated non redundant cross reference database now what do you mean by that see curated means whatever the information i as an author has submitted it is verified reviewed and then published second thing if i have given any information regarding amylase suppose and uh, another candidate say shamli has given inform information regarding another amylase then if both our entries are similar then they will not take both the entries they will only take one entry and will represent it in a database that means it is non redundant there is no repetitive there is no repetitive entries there is no repetition that we are talking about in this database so if it's if there is a repetition you might end up taking four copies of same thing but if there is no repetition you will be taking single copy of single copy of your query and it going ahead then it is having cross reference part cross reference means what see when you go to a doctor you take a prescription and he he says that you have this particular deformity or disease then you go for a second opinion and if you go for second opinion then only you corroborate that yes whatever the doctor has said it's right similar cases with this particular protein when whatever the information is present it's not solely based on swiss prot it has cross referenced it with all the databases that is present based on sequence retrieval system the srs system based on sequence retrieval system it has the complete in, uh, complete cross reference information at a single base like if i talk about what are the changes that are happening in protein after being translated then it will be having information of more than 34 different databases and then it will be presenting it in a single page that is why we call it as it is highly cross reference and that is the thing that you want you want a book that should represent everything that is present inside that particular field it should not be a specialized book until unless you are going for certain scenarios then uh, despite apart apart from the sequences that we are talking about this particular database gives you the access point the tools of variety of servers you can go to you can click on a link and you can go to the cell signaling pathways of different different categories you search dna polymerase apart from the the replication where this dna polymerase is performing the function you can go to those functions you can go to molecular functions you can go to biological functions you can go to phylogenetic analysis you can go to structural analysis there are n number of servers that or software tools that are developed with swiss prot to the sequence which you can get access to then uh, your protein which you have searched and more than 800 different species it can give you a search and only first 20 species are represented which are actually having 42% of the sequences so that's not a point that you should be bothering about because you'll be going about phylogenetic tree and then we'll be looking about in this particular scenario so when when we talk about the other case let's talk about the trimble which is another part now see 
Trimpel is translation of EMBL. What do you mean by that? EMBL is European Molecular Biology Laboratories. It's a nucleotide database that you know. Suppose it contains uh, thousand. Suppose, suppose, just suppose, thousand sequences are there, out of which seven hundred are verified and three hundred are not verified. They are still under process. What I am me meant by translated EMBL, the complete sequence by simulation by computer, I translated. I translated the complete sequences, and then. Those translated sequences are clubbed in Tremble. Are clubbed in Tremble. Now, please understand this number is if it increasing in this manner. If it increases in this manner, 10 lakh sequences. Now, in those sequences, it contains the complete genome part, out of which only 3% is coding. Only 3% equivalent to 3% is coding. So, whatever the sequence is there, whether it is coding or it is non coding. We are translating them and putting it in Tremble and putting them in Tremble and you can easily translate because you know the genetic code. You know the genetic code. You know that AUG, when we're talking about AUG, it will code for methanin. It will code for methanin. Likewise, every code, every code, you know, is responsible for an amino acid. And if there are 100 nucleotides, if there are 100 nucleotides, you can easily decipher how many amino acid and what type of amino acid will be formed. So that's a very easy job for a simulator to do. And the complete information is stored in Tremble. Complete information is stored in Tremble. And that is why we have written here that it's a computer annotated supplement to Swiss prod. That means it's not experimentally verified. We are talking about what? We are talking about simply the computer based translation computer based translation derived, derived from automated coding sequence translations that we are talking about. now among this when we're about three percent suppose we have translated everything and put it here then the sequences which are eventually getting reviewed and verified will be transferred to swiss prod and remaining which are still in pending state which are still in pending state, they are stored in Tremble. So that is the reason why these two are of most important. These two are of most important. So when we are talking about Swiss prod, see, file format, we'll be talking about this is called as flat file as you want it sent. But I forget this. These are called as annotations. These are the descriptions that we'll be talking about. Always the file starts from the entry name and the session number. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, this protein data with the Swiss prod and uh, among Swiss prod and Tremble, usually Swiss prod is broadly used for uh, databasing other rather than Tremble. Is it right? Yeah, it's right. And it's a very common notion that Swiss prod is used mostly. But when you'll be going for exercise, we'll be seeing that we are using a software called as Uniprod. And it contains both Swiss prod and Tremble. So these days we are not using Swiss prod individually, we are using the club part. And the reason is very simple. What is the reason? This contains all the known sequence. This contains unreviewed sequences. So if I have a sequence which I want to match, whether it is published, reviewed, or it is still in pending state, so I can search in both the parts to have a complete coverage. Also, so th these days, it's not maintained as a separate platform. It is maintained as a composite platform under the name of Uniprod. Okay. okay. So this is annotation and uh, this is your description. I'll not go in detail of this file format because we'll anyhow be seeing how this thing is done and how this particular function is there. Then let's stop the primary database there. Let us focus on structural database. Among the structural database, I told you basic two databases of SCOP and CATH. Now, these are the these were actually the first databases, or you can say the primitive databases that were used. These days, we use advanced databases, databases like 3D sequence. Now, this 3D sequence is a server kind of database. What it does, it will take your question. Your question, your question is what? The sequence which you have identified. It will take that. It will match in among the database and it will give you the prominent structure that your sequence can fold to. 
you have a sequence you know, want to know how this might go in folding and forming a structure it will take your sequence it will put into the different database match it and will give you 10 50 different probable structures likewise we have ffsp now this is based exhaustively based on complete comparison of three dimensional structures of database using protein data bank as as the basic information source then dali is regularly used by us now this dali is used for what uh, suppose there is a amino acid sequence uh, they, this amino there are two amino acid sequences this is forming a, first of all a helix then a loop and then again a helix this is forming a helix and then immediately a beta sheet so there is no defined loop so what is happening this dali is used to determine the structures or the fold which are there in a protein and if you want to categorize the complete flow protein family based on these small small domains then you can use dali as a software tool to perform your or as a database tool to perform your job to perform your job fine and then all these databases whether it is 3d sequence dali or 3d what we are talking about see this 3d is providing you the information of what it is providing you the information of structure of a protein based on domains, their definition, and their folding pattern. Now, what is important? All these few what I have narrated here, they need information. They need sequence information. They need structural information. Then only they are able to perform their work. And that structural information is given by protein data bank, which is the basic database and scope and cat scop and get so you see this is how the complete structural database is come so let us talk about the protein data bank whenever a biotechnologist whenever a, a drug development drug discoverer has to go about in deciphering whether the drug is working or not what i need i need a protein structure when a protein structure is formed until unless you are not aware of the sequence you cannot give rise you cannot have any information of structure now see from amino acid sequence you can simulate computer based simulation to form a structure or you can experimentally verify experimentally check based on nmr or x-ray crystallography and then you can propose a structure and that structure is consolidated structure or a true structure once you have predicted the structure from computer based still still you have to showcase it in wet lip scenario in order to consolidate it. Now, see, if you are using a calculator, you add, give 2 plus 2, it is giving you 4. How a calculator came to know that 2 plus 2 is 4? Because initially you have incorporated a program in it. For the same say, for that same say, when you are using computer based simulation to predict the structure, you got to give certain templates how they are folding what is the delta g in it of that gives free energy for that what is the folding energy what is the activation energy all those parameters are taken from experimental part only so you see this protein data bank contains all the informations of your structurally verified uh, structures that we'll be talking about whether it is from nmr whether it's from x-ray that we are talking so that is the that is the reason why it is taken as the primary resource for structural database. Now it was established in 1972. Now you can understand why I'm while I'm saying 1970. We are talking about Swiss brought in 1980s, late 1980s, 87 or 89. Whereas before that, structural based classification was initiated because sequencing was taking much time and there was intervention between them. So what they, what happened? What happened that initially the Brooklyn Laboratory established this particular database and then based on the resources that were required, it was moved to research laboratory, research collaborative, uh, collaboratory for structural bioinformatics until now RCSB is responsible for maintaining this particular database and we'll be seeing in a while how this database is looking. And research collaboratory for science, structural bioinformatics is a site which provides you multiple platforms 
multiple platforms for student training, for student internship, and it will open a part. This is the format that still is valid. Still, this format is being showcased here. Again, you can see there is a clear cut demarcation. This is annotation. This is description. What is the compound name? It's hemoglobin protein. Who is the author? What from where this information has been taken? When this information was given, when it was verified, and after verified, when it was released, and then the structural parameters, the structural parameters, whether it is being it is being uh, generated by NMR or it is being generated by X-ray, it is written here. And when you are going for X-ray, what parameters? See, please be be clear and have a clear understanding. This is three dimension. X, Y, Z. This is your amino acid sequence. Amino acid sequence will fold in three dimension. So from here to folding here, you have to structurally identify the coordinates of every position. That is X, Y, and Z. And what they are showing, they are giving you the structural coordinates for every structure. So that if you want to identify the structure, you can easily identify and we'll be seeing all these uh, information resources what they are when we are going live on that particular website then they will give you a showcasing you the structure in this format in different different forms ribbon form and everything form so what you are doing you can put your cursor on any of the section and you will see the sequence which is appearing in, which is appearing here you can move this structure in any manner you can rotate this structure you can identify where this potassium is binding where the again where is the cysteine residue where is the disulfide bond so all those things are possible using pdb then we have scop scop is nothing but structural classification of protein that is written here structural classification of protein it was it was given in 1995 if i'm right 1995 now what it does it categorizes your protein in four different parts. First of all, a class, then fold, then superfamily and family. Now, what do you mean by that? Just have a pretty understanding because when you'll be using it, you will be uh, you will be reading it completely. Now, when you're talking about the general structure part, suppose a protein is there. Protein is there. Uh, let's talk about this particular protein. These proteins are. There. First of all, it will see what is the structure. Is this globule and this is fiber. So I have two categories. Then it will see how these are folding, how the sequences are arranged to give rise to secondary structure. Then information is taken for fold. So fold wise, I came to know this is alpha uh, helix loop and alpha helix. This is alpha helix dimer. Suppose, right? So that is the job of fold evolution. That is the job of fold evolution. Then we talk about the superfamily. It will identify whether these structures have any similarity with the families that are already present or whether they have the similarity between them so that we can club them in the same family. So this superfamily identification will give you a hint under which category you have to put this particular protein. And then last is the family. You will be coming to know that based on the sequence similarity, based on the sequence similarity, it is belonging to what family. So you see SCOP is doing what? It is analyzing the structure also. It is analyzing the secondary structure also. And then it is giving rise to a family classification based on the complete sequence similarity. That is what SCOP is doing. So SCOP has now following classes. Proteins which are having multiple alpha helix domains, proteins which are having multiple beta sheet domains, or proteins which are having uh, both uh, alpha beta domains and combinations of that, and proteins which are having uh, independent alpha helices, like in this manner, we have alpha helices. And then later on, it has multiple uh, beta sheets that are present in this scenario. So these are the four major classes that are there in SCOP. Then we have CAT, CAT, I like to call it a simple CAT. 
Now, what is cath? Cath is nothing but a mere composition of different different attributes. The C stands for class, A for architecture, T for topology, and H for homology. Class. I will be able to predict the class when I know what are the secondary structures. Once I have a protein, I will identify a secondary structure and will assign all the secondary structures. So when you put your query, it will first see what are the secondary structures. Let us quickly assign the classic secondary structures. After that, how these structures are folding, how these structures are folding in order to give an architecture, in order to give an architecture. Then how these folded proteins, how these architecture proteins are actually giving you a representation, whether it's a globule, whether it's a fibronin, how? And then last, they go for homology. They go for homology. How? Once a structure is formed, then this structure is now used to match the other structures which are present inside the families in order to decipher where this particular protein can be put under the family category. So you see, this is the main job of cat and scope. Scope was doing what? It was first, it was going in reverse manner. It was having the structure going to sequence. Cat, what is doing? It has sequence, then secondary, then complete structure, then structure to structure matching. So there are two different ways in which you can club the structural databases form. So when we are talking about the composite database here, the composite database, this is what I wanted to tell you when we're talking about the composite database. We'll be focusing on this particular part that is called as Uniprot using this. But then OWL is there that contains SwissProt and GenBank for gene protein information resource. Again, PIR is one of the finest databases, the primary databases of protein and NRL3D. That is again a non redundant database of three dimensional form. Then there are NRDB, MIPS, S that contains number of databases and they take information from all this and give you on a single page. And that is the job of composite databases. So when we're talking about OWL, OWL is a non-redundant database. It takes information from SwissProd as well as GenBank and NR3D. That is all that you should be remembering. This is the thing that we'll be performing. We'll be talking about the Uniprot, which is again a knowledge based database. It contains both SwissProt and Tremble. You can see that SwissProt has less number of sequences. Tremble has highest number of sequences. Why? Because it is automatically generated. These sequences will be verified and then they will be deposited here. And that part we'll be talking about in detail. But you should remember that these databases are searched using sequence retrieval system. These databases are searched using sequence retrieval system then we have secondary databases now these secondary databases we know the names like pfm prints blocks how these databases are clear. let us see in this particular table this table will give you the list how this one see secondary database has to take information from every primary part okay so prosite takes its information from swiss prod blocks is uh, let us come to the later part. PFM is taking from SwissProt, Profile is taking from SwissProt. Now, Prince is taking all the information from OWL. OWL is a composite database, right? Remember, so it was having the information from SwissProt, it was having the information from GenBank and other NL3D, MIPSEX. So what it is doing, it is taking a broader coverage. Then there is Block. Now Block is doing what? It is taking the information from ProSite as well as from Print. So you can understand how the evolution takes place. Now, the basic question that comes in mind, why so many secondary databases? See, you started a subject, you started a field, you had a basic understanding, you prepared a database. Then somebody else came, take that information and prepared a much better database, then much better than taking all information, a club one. That is how the chronology went on. And what happened? The first database which was formed was ProSite. The first database which was formed was ProSite. And this actually will summarize how or what is the principle behind that particular information. So I have multiple sequences here. I have five sequences in this manner. I matched them, I aligned them, and I observed that there are regions of homology or similarity that we see. When we are combining five sequences, uh, let's say here, 
let's say these five seconds. What is the common region? This is the common region, right? And this is called as similarity portion or homology. So we have different regions of homology. Now, what prosides things, or what prints things, or what blocks will think that? Let us discuss. Now, if the complete proteins, all the proteins are grouped or clubbed on the basis of a single motif, this is called as motif. This region, which is common to all, is called as motif. If it is grouped, grouped on a single motif, then it is called it is called as your prosite. If it is grouped on multiple motifs, multiple motifs, then they are called as prints. Then they are called as prints. So the upper portion is based on single motif, whereas the lower portion is based on multiple motifs. So prints and blocks, what they are doing? The prints will take multiple motifs. If, if I want to align and I am aligning based on this, then chances of errors are higher, right? But if I'm aligning based on this, this, and this, then chances of errors are reducing. And that is what Prince is doing. Prince is taking multiple motifs at a single time and performing the alignment, whereas Prosite is taking a single motif and performing the alignment. Then we, as biologists, we always want a certain, certain mathematical interpretation always so that we are assured that what we are doing is right. And that is why every work is assigned certain number of matrices, the sc scoring part that will be seen. If, if the scoring is given, then the same prints is called as blocks. It's called as blocks. And then there are other models called as hidden Markov models and uh, other, other sort of models that we'll be talking about slowly and slowly, not exactly the same time. So that is the reason why we are talking about the prosite. It's the first secondary database which was developed. It was first, and right now it is primitive or all also. It was based on the motifs which are similar in the, your query, and those are called as regular expressions. And this is how the prosite looks actually. When you will see that you will be seeing what motif it is representing. It will give you the sequence of amino acid which it has taken in order to club the proteins. And this is how it looks. ID, identification number, accession number, DT for date, DE for definition. The most important is this. The most important is this. PA for pattern. What pattern? The sequence what you incorporate among that sequence, which part was chosen by the computer to choose as motive, to become as motive. The thing which we are discussing here, which part is taken as motive that part will be represented in form of pattern and this is the clubbing of the form families that are being given that these are the family these are the proteins which are having a common pattern that is here and you can club them into a single family and can go for forming forming the second data and then we have prints i told you prints takes up multiple uh, patterns, multiple motifs that we are talking about. Then we have profiles. Now, why I am talking about profile? In evolution or in bioinformatics or in biotechnology, how things are progressing ahead? How things are progressing ahead? See, during evolution, what happened? In eukaryotes, if we talk about eukaryotes, then from ancestor, from ancestors to different species arise then from this two different species are arising how the how this evolution is going on it is because of this word insertions and deletions there is a defined genotypic change there is a defined phenotypic change how that see how that particular change is happening if this is a dna sequence then there are certain insertions in that sequence and there are certain deletions which give rise to an which give rise to an another species. Now that another species can be superior also based on positive condition. So if we take that concept as such and we put it in bioinformatics, we put it in bioinformatics and we give numerical values to all those insertions and deletions and then we club them into a single platform and that platform is called as profile. That platform is called 
called as chlorophyll whereas blocks when we are talking about blocks what they did they were they never wanted to go to prosite and then to print then to prefab they wanted to have a single page where all the three informations can be clubbed so that's why they created a uh, blocks that's why they created the blocks fine then let us talk about let us stop our portion right now here and let's directly go to your you know actual part uh, actual part of uh, workshop training that you'll be doing please keep your portions ready so that you can easily see let's start with swiss prod i'm opening a normal browser it's okay, i okay. hope it's visible just so, watch me first yeah please tell me uh, nothing much so you can uh, you can uh, mute yourself uh, in between you can open up to ask the questions let us see this is a normal browser i am typing swiss prod it's very familiar case if you type the swiss prod you will get these hits fine now please please look at their look at their web address and then try to open the first one i am clicking and opening the second one also is i am clicking opening for your sake let us go to the first one first one is the actual database of swiss prod which i am using that is termed as uniprod that is termed as uniprod fine then we have next link that is just a information expressy tool which is giving you that yes you can use this tool for performing different functions but it is not giving you the page of the database for that you got to go back to your swiss prod group so we will not be using this particular part we want to use this particular swiss prod uniprod part fine now see in that uniprod uniprod page you have a overview of this particular uniprod you have a overview of this particular uniprod what it is saying this is a composite database this is a composite database which is divided into three different aspects kb that is knowledge based ref that is reference park means the patterns based clustering we always use we plot knowledge base because we want to take the information from this particular scenario then it is also giving you the institutes that are involved institutes that are in in this particular type like swiss institute of bioinformatics for swiss prod embl for trembol georgetown university for providing protein information resources and that is why the single page is completely being utilized in the form if you see in the header you the most important part the training the for students this is the most important part because it gives you the complete links and access to the live trainings to a free trainings to the opportunities that you will be having abroad if you want to talk about the that particular scenario then let us go ahead and talk about uh, a brief in ebi european bioinformatics institute it is present in embl and you can thoroughly look into it go it and perform your work or you can explore the site wherever you want to explore it then let's uh, go to the services part what are the services that they are providing see they have n number of softwares that are listed here they have n number of softwares if you want to use a tool for performing some specific functions you can use the tools we'll be using those tools we'll be performing blast also in the later section we'll be using multiple alignment also and this particular part these are the databases that they will they are providing you the pdb they are providing you the uniprod they are providing you like google they are providing you n sample by using which you can take out any gene out of the databases or they are providing you pmc which is a literature database that you can use they are providing you chemistry embl if i want to identify a drug i need all the drug information that is available that is provided by using ch embl the chemical uh, database which we having complete structures of all the molecules that are being synthesized till date and if you click on this see all databases you will be having the complete list that you will be uh, that you always want to study fine then let's talk about the uniprod let's talk about the uniprod i actually went from swiss prod to uniprod you can directly type uniprod here uniprod 
and you will be having you will be landing on the first hit that's a website page and that is called as uniprod.org and the list of the data source is here it is endless it is endless every day new database is formed for the sake of ours and we use them in different different scenarios in different different scenarios whether it is whether you want to identify the cpg islands inside the genome whether you want to identify the polymorphism inside the genome whether you want to identify any any particular single nucleotide polymorphism site or whether you want to go for uh, electron tomography images databases or you want to identify uh, let's talk about uh, what are the peptides that are formed before protein is completely going to then you must have read in cell biology about the hydropathy curve if you want to identify the hydropathy plot of every protein that is known till date the database is available so that is the reason why we are having so much of information that we can take before going to any experimental approach and all the industries and the research centers do the same thing then that was a brief introduction let's talk about uniprot uniprot we have knowledge base today there are 565,054 known protein sequences that are present here. So we have we have 5,065 uh, 565,000 protein sequences that are unique, manually annotated and reviewed. That's which are present in SwissProt. And remaining are 219. Uh, you can if you want to go for uh, in international system then more than 219 million sequences are there in triangle so every time this is automatically generated this will be verified reviewed and then it will be published in swiss product so then let us begin i hope you all remember this particular aspect if you have countered any time in the form of swiss product then let's talk about any kind of protein uh, let's begin with human protein only or you can go for mouse protein only let me show this to you let's start with the basic protein that uh, i hope everybody will be aware or aware that is fructokinase what is fructokinase it is enzyme that is using glycosylases so i just wrote fructokinase i got a page in this format now the page the first page that is giving that is being showcasing is very simple what it is showing it is giving you the entry name. This is the tag name which is giving entry number. This is the entry name. These are the protein names that are there. The gene name. See protein name and gene name. What is there? Protein name, fructokinase. Gene name is the gene which is coded in the genome. We have a mapped genome and that is the tag here. And here it's the organism. So this is important for you. If you want to isolate for humans, you should talk about humans if you're talking about mouse you should be able to talk about the mouse so i have just written fructokinase that's why i'm getting the list of organisms if i am writing uh, humans fructokinase humans so what i'll get i'll get the first hit of human that is hexokinase fine or if you're searching for any other enzyme any other protein let's talk about uh, let's say any transcription factor stat stat you will get the complete information regarding that particular stat. If I'm routing a human stat one, then you'll be getting the Homo sapiens stat. What is stat? It's a transcription factor. It's an immunoregulatory transcription factor which is responsible for interferon secretion. So any protein, you can name it, you can type it, you can get the list, the complete list. Like if you talk about a basic protein, let's say collagen, human. You will get the complete collagen list, the complete chains. If you're not writing human, you can get different different hits: humans, rat, mouse. You can take any. So for your sake, let us open any of it. Let's talk about the human one. And I'm for opening. There are two active links. First is organism. If you click on organism, you will be getting the taxonomical classification. Fine. When you are talking about this particular part, then you will be getting the proper page. This is the page of complete Swiss product. This is the page of Swiss product that you should be talking about. Now, this is, you see, there's a huge amount of information that is stored in this particular Swiss product. And we will be discussing this information in today and tomorrow's session. 
cumulatively taking all the databases first swiss fraud then pdb then other databases also then let us see from here this is the number which is given in uniprot to this particular protein what is the protein the name is collagen alpha 1 it's the seventh form of collagen what is the gene inside homo sapiens that is call 7 a1 if you can see carefully gene is always written in capitals protein is in running form that is the standard present what is the organism it's human homo sapiens most important part status it is reviewed that means it is verified it is verified if you are clicking it if you'll see the new page will have open and you will see the complete information regarding this document whether it is reviewed whether it is unreviewed what is the sign so everything you can identify and whether it is experimentally verified in wet lab yes it is experimentally verified so that information will also be there fine then what is the function of this it's an extracellular matrix protein type 4 collagen right function is written here. okay that's the basic function what are the other functions what are the other functions molecular functions you see there are list of molecular functions it can be endopeptidase inhibition activity biological process it is involved in cell addition it is involved in endodermal differentiation it is involved in epidermis development so i just randomly click, click on three and then you will be getting the complete information of that particular function where that function is happening you see this process if you click on any of the process you will be getting that particular thing in detail you'll be getting that particular thing in detail then any topic you can pick see this complex network if you click on this you will be getting to know how this collagen is working in tissue development how it is working in differentiation of forming a complete organ so that is the thing that is provided whether it is in notochord formation whether it is medulla oblongata formation whether it is optical cycle formation so i need not to go anywhere else i can answer regarding any protein based on my search in the plot itself suppose i search for p53 which is again a very common protein and then i open the human p53 now the function is written here so much elaborative function so much elaborative function and then the what they are doing see the molecular functions see the molecular functions here the list is endless it is involved in protein folding it is involved in uh, DNA binding, it is involved in promoter sequence binding, it is also involved in activating polymerase 2, in cell cycle arrest, in aging, in histone modification. So all the functions are there. And you can click on any of the function, like I have clicked on double strand DNA repair pathway. So you can go to that function and can study the complete pathway, how it is performing the DNA repair, how it is performing the DNA repair path. So that is the point that I wanted to show you. In function, the prominent function will be written here. The prominent function will be written here, of course. And then they will be also showing which is the cofactor which is binding, whether it is a metal binding protein. And if metal is binding, what metal is binding to this protein inside your body? We say that zinc is very much important. Why zinc is important? Because zinc is involved with binding to this 53, which is responsible for DNA repair pathway. If zinc is deficient, then the mutation rate always increases. And that is what it is showing here. It's a metal binding protein. What else it is showing you? That zinc is interacting with these amino acids, the 176 position amino acid. You click on it, we'll get which is the 176. It's a cysteine residue. It's a cysteine residue. So this is how the complete page is representing you the value. Then it's a DNA binding region. Which region is involved in DNA binding? The sequence region from 102 to 290 to 292. The region which is represented here is actually the DNA binding domain, DNA binding motif of this protein. So if I want to isolate the motif from any protein, I need not to go to secondary database. I can type the name here. I can see which region is DNA binding. I can click on this region and I'll directly go to the blast and take the sequence from here. So that is how the things are being performed. Okay, so let us go ahead. Let us go ahead. I'll not brush up so much fast. Let us go ahead. So these are all the functions that are there. If in collagen, if the protein is not involved in multiple function, that is the list will be short. 
this is very relevant function that's why this list is endless list is endless then the keywords will be there for you uh, in response to this particular pathway like it's ever process it's ever process if i click on ever process what i'll be getting see ever process you will be getting what is actually a process how that biological process is going about if you want to know more about that process you can click on this particular the process and how that type of process is happening you will be getting a complete picture you will be getting the review articles also which are specific for this page where the complete pathway is iterated you will be getting the complete information with the chart format if you want to uh, understand anything that how cell death is happening or if you want to check any other pathway you can go but let us go ahead all right so apart from this what are the enzymatic pathways that this particular protein is involved in what are the signaling pathways that this particular protein is involved in the list is here in front of you suppose with p53 you are working on cell cycle then you are interested in these two pathways if with p53 you are working in case of let's say oncology then you are interested in noxa pathways if you are working let's say in the field of uh, uh, proteasome degradation that you should be interested in this particular path so based on my lab interest based on my work interest i can identify which part i had to highlight and i can draw from this page directly to that page and then study what are the functions of this p53 what are the functions of this p53 then there are plenty other databases that are provided the link the main thing is second part is called as names and taxonomy what names what are the other names that are given to this p53 it's a tumor antigen it's a tumor antigen now please remember it's a tumor antigen and it's a tumor suppressor so these two names names are given by people who came to identify them it's a prominent tumor suppressor gene so when people ask you search tumor suppressor gene this is the gene which is which actually they are talking about that is p53 the name of the gene is tp53 inside our genome inside our genome now this is the taxonomical classification that is always there see this this is actually the simulation what swiss broad provides what simulation this is a cell this is our cell So uh, there was a certain error inside. Let us again resume where we, where we were left. Let me share the screen with you. Okay, this session here. When the session 